So here I am trying to start a video and apparently we just have Mr. BA over here who's going to fly over absolutely everything because why the hell not? Uh, yeah, let's pretend he doesn't exist. So welcome to City Skylines. We're going to go ahead and take a quick train ride here because there's something that we're going to talk about today. I've been thinking about making this video for a while and I thought, why the hell not? Let's see how it goes. I've been playing City Skylines quite a bit recently, and by recently I mean in the last almost a year. There's another train right there. And, oh, I, I forgot how steep the very top of that hill was there because of the junction. And I've been doing a lot of rail systems on here. City Skylines is a really, really fun game for making advanced railroad transportation systems. It's just so, so fun, and I've been doing a lot of them, and I thought it might be helpful for somebody with actual railroad experience to go through and explain a little bit about the transportation systems themselves, how they could be made better, uh, easier, more efficient. Also, by absolutely no means whatsoever is this going to be a professional looking video, so let me go ahead and apologize for that one ahead of time. I don't have professional recording equipment. I don't have all the fancy stuff to do that, so I've got to apologize for that in advance. We'll make this as good as we can. So, a couple things that I'll talk about while we take our quick train ride across the trestle here, coming off of the town of Dillon's Peak, which is what we've just departed, is there's different types of rail transportation in cities towns. We're going to be focusing on rails. We won't be touching anything about blimps or planes or buses or ferries, specifically rails and not a whole lot about trams, but we will mention them a little bit because I do have some on the city here. And we'll show you kind of how different types of rail transportation can intermingle with each other to make it work a lot more efficiently and get your citizens where they're trying to go faster, which then will make them take transportation more and you make more money off of it. So it's a win-win situation. Now you have trains, you have metros, or as we call them here in the U.S., subways, and you have trams. Now, we could go into monorails, but not going to go monorail, not going to go cable car. They're not railroad enough. We're sticking specifically with your railroad transportation. Here's another weird kink in the track. We're going to ignore that exists. And one thing you notice is this train is running on a single main track with passing sidings. That's a neat mod, a neat system, a mod that will actually run your single track uh, bi-directional running for you. I'm not going to get into that because that's a little irrelevant, but if you want to check it out, if I remember correctly, you can yell at me if I don't. I can put a link to the mod in the description. I can make a video if you'd like, if you'd like me to explain actually how it works. This is a pretty neat little system. So with your trains and your metros and your trams, there's different ways that you could use each one. And this is what I have found to be the best, most efficient way to use them. Trains can carry more people generally than any other mode of transportation in terms of your railroads. They just have a much higher capacity, they're longer sets, and they're faster. So covering a longer distance in a shorter amount of time, you're gonna wanna use some sort of railroad like we're riding right now. And there's two different railroad lines in this particular city. I'm gonna wait for the engineer to finish his horniness. There we go, that's much better. And then, once you get down from the railroads, the next step is going to be your trams, if you're asking me. Now, trams can be used in several different ways. You can have a tram line going through a residential area that's making very frequent stops, basically a rail version of a bus line. Or you can have trams covering a bit wider distance, not exactly as far-fetched as the railroads may be, but covering a larger distance between stops. And then you have your metros, and the metros are very, very good for short, local jobs. And I actually like to run two types of metros. I like to run an express line and a local line for the busier main streets when I'm going to have a lot of stations in one area. Because you will actually find, if you run a local and express line, and I'll show you in a little bit exactly how that is set up, you will find that your citizens will actually use them accordingly. If they're going a longer distance on a subway, they'll take an express line that's faster, and then they'll transfer 
to a local train to get to the actual station that they want to go to. So it's actually pretty cool the way they do that because your citizens are going to find the fastest way to get to where they want to go. Now the other thing that you want to keep in mind when you're setting this up, and I'll show you exactly how to balance these things out in a little bit, is you want to make sure that you have enough people using your lines to make it worthwhile to use them. So we're going to go ahead and jump off the train here because right next to the tracks where this train is currently passing, I actually have something that kind of lays this out a little bit just for a little visual aspect. And what you're going to see is that I have the railroad down here at the bottom. And I'm going to get rid of that just so we don't have all these pop-ups going on to distract us. And what I'm basically laying out here is that your railroads are going to travel the longest distance between stops. They're faster, they can carry more people, and they're great for if you have like a town to town or borough to borough, district to district, whatever you want to call it. They're perfect for like an intercity travel, but within the city as well. And then you have two different types of metros. Now I've lined this out with the green and gray bridges just for the demonstration. The green would be your express and the gray would be your local. Your local metro making every single station stop along whatever line it's on. And then your express being its own tunnel but running parallel the entire way and stopping at half the stops or the more busy stops, maybe transfer stations, things like that. And you'll see that on this city very shortly. And then in the back, just in case you do have the Snowfall DLC and you are using trams, again, trams, there's a lot of different ways to use them. Personally, on this city in particular, I've used them for longer distance travel, but not quite as long as the trains. So if you want to go somewhere faster than an express subway, but you're not quite going far enough to make it worthwhile taking a train out of station, then you're probably going to jump on a tram, and you'll probably find that it's about the same speed, maybe faster, than the express subway. The only problem with trams is they're above ground. They do mingle with traffic on roads, so it's not good to have them on main streets, which I'm about to completely contradict that when I back up, because I have trams going down pretty much all the main streets on this city. But it's well balanced, and it's not really messing with the traffic. So one thing that I do want to take a quick look at is I made a nice map using something online and uh yes there's a, a free map maker uh, maker online i didn't do anything fancy i just threw this together in about five minutes just to demonstrate kind of how the system works and i'll show you the system in the game itself shortly one thing to point out real quick is odessa city station and odessa city station are the same station that is a transfer between the subway line and the station within the same building so those are together. Other than that, none of these other stations actually do transfer with each other between the subway and the trains. If you're going from, say, the Trump Tower station, which would be closer to the Dillon Beach Railroad station, then you're actually going to take a tram between the two stations. And it, it'll be a very quick ride. It's not that long of a ride. But there's a very convenient tram that takes you that way. On the bottom corner here, I did line out what the lines are there are three metro lines shown two train lines shown and i did not show the tram lines because there are so many that it would be absolutely ridiculous for me to try to list all of their station stops so i felt like that wasn't as important we're going to focus on railroads and subways mostly in this little discussion we're having here now i should also point out dillon central terminal over here on the top left hand side this is the terminal that the intercity trains from outside our map will arrive and drop everybody off and then they can take the Dillon's Peak local out wherever they may need to go and then they can transfer there. There's also a tram line from Dillon Central that I'll show you in a moment that will take you to Station Avenue. Dillon Central is on Station Avenue and you can get onto the metro system there and travel pretty much anywhere very conveniently. Um, in the video at the very beginning here, the clip we rode from Dillon's Peak down to Odessa City Station. We made a station stop there, and we were actually on a Karina shuttle, so we came down this way, and right about here is where I jumped off the train, but it would have kept going to the small town of Karina, which is kind of like a suburban area. It's a small town out in the middle of nowhere that is accessible by road or by the railroad. 
And then, this is kind of self-explanatory, that's the International Airport. Very busy station, kind of out in the middle of nowhere, um, but there is a little bit around there. So we'll jump back into the city here, and we're going to take a look at exactly how these express and local stations are laid out. Because this is a very neat system if you do it right, modeled actually after what systems like the MTA in New York City do. And for this... Uh, I am going to ask you to ignore all of the symbols and such coming around the city. I have absolutely no intention in focusing on those whatsoever. I've spent the last hours getting ready for the video and have completely neglected my city. So my citizens are probably really pissed at me. As you can see, a lot of them are dead. So that's fantastic. Besides that, the ridership on the railroad and transit systems are absolutely fantastic. So first thing I should point out is our main train terminal is here and most passengers tourists coming into the city will jump onto our trolley line and will ride around the beautiful scenery at the lake here past our campus area and then they will end up here where they can jump onto the subway system you can see there's a ton of people here taking the trolleys out to dillon central terminal now one thing to mention right off the bat is I have some subway stations off the workshop. Once again, if I remember, I'll put them in the description. If not, yell at me in the comments and I will do so. And these are just stations that you can use to transfer between lines without actually having to leave the station and cross the street because the default subway station is only one platform and the area it takes up above ground for the entryway is a two by two. However, this one is actually more compact above ground it only takes up one square or one by one it's just a small elevator entrance and there's a couple different kinds too you can have three lines parallel you can kind of see the symbols on the bottom here you can have two lines crossing one you can have two lines crossing two lines and you can have two lines side by side these two i have used most prevalently i have used this one you'll see in a moment to connect the third line but these are very convenient because you can kind of see people walking through underground here is they are it, it, it's kind of hard to see but if you can see them they are cr uh, crossing between lines without actually having to go up off ground so it's great they're not intermingling with your road traffic and they can transfer between trains very easily they don't in this station lot because it's a station at the end of the line of terminal but let's take a look at the actual lines themselves because this is the interesting part now the green tunnel that you're seeing is the express and the yellow that you're seeing is the local which we just saw on the map now here we have the first local stop and the express train i know it's kind of hard to see because we have a couple buses and trams on this road above ground but the express does not stop here it's one platform and only the local train stop here the express will bypass same with the next station this next station is bypassed by the express trains and then our next stop will be a combined transfer stop so if people were to get on way back to the left there an express train they may come out here get off grab a local and go out one more stop in this particular case they wouldn't because the next stop is actually an express stop as well because it is a busier stop and it was worth having the express trains stop here as well so this is an express and local stop with our bigger station where we have the express the local and if we look back at the map you'll see this odessa ave local this is the north odessa avenue station right here and that's where these three lines converge so you can see that line coming up above and they're actually on a different level the odessa ave local is a upper level and then the cheyenne avenue lines actually dip below this platform so it's cool they don't actually crash into each other you can see people here coming off trains transferring like wild this is a very very busy station keep moving along the line there's a couple more stops that only local trains will make the express will bypass and then two more stops at the end of the line which both of these stops are express and local stops reason being very popular stops transfer opportunities to these lines up above ground on the roads which are the tram lines and having transfers to your other transportation is a very important thing to have if we take a look through we'll be able to see how many people are using the system now odessa have local is almost up to 1200 people a week now there is one thing to mention about these numbers you're going to notice that your train lines or any lines that travel a greater distance between stops 
are not going to show a lot of passengers. Now, don't let that discourage you and make you think that people don't use that line because they do. What you actually want to look at, how full are your trains? There's a train here that is jam-packed with people. And actually, Dillon's Peak Local should probably get another train or two because I'm looking here and... Uh, let's see, this station here, which is... Oh, yes, this is the airport. The uh, airport stop is... <laughs> there are... There were almost 800 people waiting on one platform, and the station right after that, where Odessa is, is currently holding 400 people. So, I'm actually going to just double check and make sure I have my types selected that I like to have on this line. I do. And I'm actually going to add two more trains to this line so that they can start taking care of some of these passengers. That's one thing you want to do is make sure these are balanced out. You want to keep an eye on how many people are waiting at each station to get on your train. And you also want to keep an eye on how full your trains are. This train's empty, but everybody on this train got off at this stop here, which makes perfect sense because this is the ending stop for this particular line. It stops here, and you can get on and then leave town here, but if a train just left town, then nobody might want to get on yet. So, and we're going to ignore that monorail. That literally goes back and forth up to the Chirpex launch site. That's about it, though, so it's nothing important for our means here so again your train lines are probably going to look less busy but remember it counts passengers per week and since your train lines stop less often they're picking up passengers left often and if, if you look at the bottom left hand corner you can see just how quickly each day goes by actually we have a train pulling in now but uh, if you look at the bottom left of the screen you can see just how quick the days go by and Ah, uh, there's a lot. Oh, look at all those people getting off. And there's a small bus that goes around this town here. It's Dillon's Peak. Nice little town up on top of the mountain here with a beautiful trestle going across the river. Some beautiful track uh, and scenery packs going on here in this city. But um, since the weeks pass quickly and the trains will spend usually more than a week uh, in game time, uh, usually a lot more than a week between their station stops. It doesn't look like that many people are using them, but I assure you, if you actually look, you'll probably notice that there are a lot of people using your trains. Now, the subways are going to be a bit different. Your metro system will show a lot of people because they're making very frequent stops, and there's always people getting on and off of your metros. And actually, what you're going to see is the Odessa Ave local is perfectly balanced right now. I'm actually kind of impressed. The only station that's looking a bit high is this one, which is... Actually, this station's kind of in the middle of nowhere. It's one of the residential stops, which uh, people can get on and off at for a quite a large residential area, so good access here. Very, very busy station, though. It might be worth adding another train to this line. I probably won't, though, because... The rest of the line is looking about half full to emptier because most people on this line are getting on at one station and getting off throughout the way. So again, you have to know how your line is laid out and know exactly what you should expect your citizens to use the line for so that you can gauge how many trains you should have on it and how it should be set up. And then there's this line here. And this is the Cheyenne Avenue Express. Now, we can see that the trains down in this area are absolutely jam-packed full. The trains coming towards are not too bad either. This one's half full. This one will be half full once it picks up everyone at that stop. There it goes. And a little under half. Not too bad. This one's definitely going to get some people once over 100 people get out at its next stop. So again, take a look through this and see how everything balances out. Now the Express is going to be less busy than the local because the local makes more stops. But the Express is still going to get very good usage because it's faster. If somebody is going, if I go back to the map here, if somebody's going from Station Avenue to, let's say, Madison Street, here's exactly what your citizen is going to do. And if you find one who you think is going to do it based on the residence they're traveling to on the platform when they're waiting for their train, you can actually follow and watch them do this. They will take an express train out to the last transfer, which in this case would be North Odessa Avenue, to which case they're going to transfer to a local train and take the local train to Madison Street. So they're going to get there a lot faster than if they stayed on a local the entire way. It's pretty cool to watch the citizens do that, and like I said, they will actually 
do that. It's really cool to watch. So if you want to make a more efficient system, I highly, highly recommend an express and a local system, both separate from each other. Now, I suppose we'll take a quick look at how the tram system is set up here because they are a mode of rail transportation and it is worth looking at them. I'm going to go ahead and leave, yeah, I'll leave those on. Let me just turn off the bus lines because there's a lot of campus buses that travel this area that'll get distracting. So this yellow here that is above ground following the street, this is our Station Avenue tram line and this is connecting the Station Ave Metro Station with all of the stops along this road including the train terminal at some point i might actually build a metro line like a shuttle coming off of probably this station here running over here but we'll see how the traffic goes if the traffic on this tram line gets to be too much which sometimes especially at this stop it does seem like it is there are a lot of people waiting there and it might be worth doing so well you might do it in the video here nah pro probably not here today but i might do it before i make another video by the way if you want to see more let me know and i can make more on city skylines it's a fun game and i do enjoy it but if we look at this purple line specifically, Cheyenne Ave, it's a very long tram line, and it follows the same exact route as the Cheyenne Ave metros. But what we'll notice is that the stops are much more further spread out. Now, this tram line used to cover the entire road. I installed the metros a couple days ago to try and get some of the tram traffic off of the roads so that we're not messing with road traffic too much because this is the main drag of the city, and it's busy. So one thing we'll notice is that there are some tram stations serving areas that the metros don't necessarily serve. We can transfer right here because we're right next door to the metro. And on this end of this little residential area, this little suburb, we do have tram stops where we don't have metro stops just because they weren't convenient to get in. And the tram will serve this area. So once again, if somebody's going there, they will take a metro to this stop, transfer to a trolley and take that out a stop or two to get where they need to go although at this point the trolley now since i put the metro in is probably faster and they might even take it the entire way and here we here we go again another stop that is close enough to a metro stop that they can walk a very short distance and make a transfer we're going to see more stops here this is a massive transfer hub the only place you can't transfer to is the railroad which we can see crossing over here and if you want to get on the railroad from this stop, take Odessa Ave up just two stops and you will be able to transfer right here at the Odessa Avenue station. Keep going along, you'll see that the tram line will make a couple more stops, once again following that same road. Not a lot of intersections on the main road either, always a smart thing regardless of what you're doing to keep intersections off the main road as much as possible. And what we'll see is more tram lines coming in here. Now, this is Dillon Beach. This area does not have any metros in it as of now, and I honestly don't plan on putting any in. Road traffic isn't too bad, and if we take a look, you see the road traffic flows nicely. I have four car sets of uh, trolleys that are running, and we can hold 260 people on one. So they are fantastic for getting a lot of people around without running 50,000 trams on one line. And this area, being a smaller area, I kind of like having this area be a tram area. A nice ambulance crashing into a truck there. I love the AI in this game. It's nice to have a little area where all your transportation is above ground because you don't get to see that a lot if you use metros. And I use metros for the convenience and the efficiency of not having to deal with your above ground traffic. But I have also used above ground metros before. There are... You can get the Metro Overhaul mod, which allows you to do it, or there are train stations that you can get as well, and you can designate a separate train line above ground that you can use for your uh, above ground Metro sort of thing. And there are trains that look like subways as well that you can actually use. It's pretty cool. I won't actually place this station, but you can kind of get the idea. It looks like an uh, elevated subway station like you would find in New York City. It's actually based off of one in Brooklyn. And there's some nice models of those online. So above ground subways are kind of a cool thing too. Doing a local and express line with those. If I end up with some more space on here in another city area, I might do that. 
maybe down here if I expand this area, the Odessa, the South Odessa area out here. Maybe I'll do that above ground because right now this is just a tram line. It'd be kind of cool to do that. If you'd like to see a video of that, let me know. I can do that in a separate video. I'll make a whole video dedicated to an above ground subway. That would be pretty cool. So let me know what you think. I'm going to cut it here. If you have any questions about your train lines, let me know. But the big things to remember, uh, I'll, I'll do my outro in, in a second. I want to find a train to ride. Here we go. Here's, here's something we can ride. We're going to ride another Odessa shuttle, except in the opposite direction. Coming from, actually, no, it's technically the Karina shuttle. I changed the name uh, right before I started the video, but I haven't actually changed the line in the game yet. But that's beside the point. So, once again, the biggest things to remember is you want to utilize all types of rail transportation that you can and have very convenient transfer stops that they can, that your citizens can choose exactly which line and mode of transportation they want to use. Trains, again, can carry a lot of people with a smaller train set versus having to run a lot of trams to carry the same amount of people. And they're fast, and you can run them between different districts, different boroughs, however you lay out your city, they can go further distances with more people in short amount of times. And then when you're getting downtown, use underground metros. They're perfect for avoiding the road traffic. And if you set up an express in a local line on your busiest line or even your busiest lines, I have some massive cities with 200,000 plus citizens, which half the subway lines do have local and express services just because they're that busy and trust me your citizens will use them they will use them religiously and it'll be so efficient that you'll actually start making a lot of money on your public transit because they'll be getting where they want to go quickly they'll be happy and because of that they'll be using them a lot more than driving all of this will help your road traffic as well but thanks for watching and once again i do apologize that the video is not professional at all I don't have all the fancy professional stuff that a lot of these million subscriber YouTubers have. So I do apologize for the quality. I know it's not as good as it could be, but it's the best I could do. And I hope you did enjoy the information anyway. Once again, if you want more videos like this, or if you want me to clarify something that I may not have clarified well enough in this video here, let me know and I can do so. I love this game. I wouldn't mind making more videos of it and of strategies in it if you guys are interested in that kind of thing. And if you're really interested, I suppose I could do a Let's Play on a, a new city or something. Maybe actually like a story mode city type of thing where I actually run with the actual budget control and everything. In case you didn't notice, this one's an infinite budget. Just I just love building massive cities and messing around with the mass transit. But again, any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll answer them as best I can. I do try to get back to most comments that deserve a response. I will try to get a response to as quickly as I can. And other than that, I really have nothing else to say. So if you really did make it this far, then thanks a lot for watching. Because that's, uh, that's a lot of watch time. This ended up... This is going to be a 30 minute video and I'm not even going to splice and dice and do any fancy editing. I'm just going to upload it raw and see what happens. Um, so once again, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. I know I repeat myself a lot. I'll try to fix that in the future. But uh, yeah, I, I really have nothing else to say except this train just almost slammed into a corner of a building that's sticking through the bridge. I'll have to fix that. So thanks for watching. That's it. And like I said, feel free to leave a comment, feel free to like. If you have a friend who might like this video or like some of the ideas in the video, then please, by all means, feel free to share it. It'd mean a lot. So that's it. Have a nice morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you're watching. And hopefully we'll see you soon on the channel.